Hey everybody, welcome back. Okay, Mark, we got you in the test stand. Batteries hooked up, oil pressure and water temperature gauges are hooked up. Transmission transfer case are lubed. I just finished pressure lubing the block. Uh, we got to hook up some fuel and then get you fired up. So uh, there's a lot to do when an engine first fires up. I'm gonna try and get you the best video I can, but I will show you it running, and I'll show the oil pressure and stuff. Uh, your alternators on there that you wanted. I did uh, send out a starter, have it rebuilt for you, so you got a uh, freshly rebuilt starter on there. I know you were missing one, and uh, we just got a temporary radiator hooked up. I'm gonna run this on water and then drain it for you uh, when I ship it. <clears throat> but uh, we've got the break-in oil in there and uh, we'll, we'll change the filter and the oil and stuff after 30 minutes of runtime. But um, we're getting there. Hang in there. I will show you the engine running next. Okay, Mark, uh, let her cool down now. Fan is still on. Uh, when you run this uh, at the beginning, after you shut it off, it might creep up a little bit. Uh, there's a little heat soak period when it's not running. <clears throat> Nothing to be alarmed about. And when you get this engine, uh, do not, let me shut the fan off. Okay, Mark, when you get this engine, don't idle it for an excessive period of time. Uh, if you want to start it to here and everything, that's fine, but don't let it idle. That's the worst thing for a new engine. Uh, you want to get these rings broken in, and the way to do that is to drive this on the road under load. Uh, and, and I'm not talking tow a trailer or anything, just uh, drive, it, drive it on the road, shift through the gears, bring the RPM up, shift through the gears, and have the whole weight of the Jeep and the passengers uh, go up hills, down hills, uh, city driving. Don't don't keep it at one speed for a long time. Uh, just drive it as you would normal around town, and um, that's the best way to break the rings in. Now uh, <clears throat> the timing is set, and the carburetor is adjusted. And again, nothing is hooked up. There's no air cleaner. There's nothing like that. So you may have to tweak the carburetor idle just a bit. And this is based on Connecticut air. And like I tell people, uh, depending where you are in the country, your air is going to be different. Your carburetor may need just a little touch of adjustment. <clears throat> Timing is five degrees before. Again, if you feel you need to change that, if something doesn't feel, you know, like it's pulling hard enough or doing anything like that, you can tweak it just a little bit. Uh, it should be fine for you. And again, put this in your Jeep and run it. Uh, don't be afraid to uh, shift through the gears, uh, one, two, three, and, uh, and and just drive it. Like I say, don't just sit there and idle it. You know, if your buddies come over or something, don't just sit there and idle it. That is the worst thing for a new engine. Get the RPMs up and get it under load. Okay, your alternator is putting out power just as it should. <clears throat> I'm going to put you a new filter in there and I'm going to put the proper oil in there. Uh, I run Shell Rotella T4 15W40 in all my engines. That's what's going in here. Uh, it will be full of oil. I'm going to drain the water so you'll have to add coolant 50-50 mix of uh, water and uh, antifreeze of your choice. 
and like I say it ran for just about 28 to 30 minutes here uh, and then I uh, <clears throat> idled it again just a little bit to check the carb and the timing one last time and it ran perfect at 170 don't be alarmed if when you get on the road and you're going up a hill it creeps up to 180 185 anything under 190 is fine on a new engine and uh, you know get the air moving through the radiator try not to sit in traffic too long and uh, this will be a good long-lasting engine transmission shifts perfectly transfer case is shifting fine I have all your mounts just kinda hanging here your main mount underneath there your transfer case mount uh, it's gonna come with your motor mounts so you can just drop this right in your chassis and uh, it's ready to go so there is the break-in of Mark's engine everything went perfect so um, we're gonna end this one here today I'll get this guy broken down um, and maybe I'll come back and just uh, I'll show you the oil and the filter that I use just so you, you have that handy mark and uh, you, you could get those locally so let me get the water draining and the oil changed and I'll be right back with you okay Mark just draining the water getting this ready for uh, crating up uh, that is what your oil looks like the first time coming out. Now if the second one looks the same way, don't be alarmed. Uh, there's a lot of assembly lube in there. And when the oil mixes with the cam lube, it looks kind of light. Uh, it's not an indication of anything. It's just a, uh, assembly lube mixing in with the oil. Uh, next one should be normal color, but sometimes there's just a little residual left in there. Um, don't be alarmed about that when you change the oil. Okay, now I would recommend, oh, in about after your first, let's say, 100 miles of driving, uh, I would change the oil again. And I set the valves just a little bit loose on new engines. And I tell this to everybody uh, get in there and adjust your valves, like I say, after your first few hard runs. Not hard runs, don't, don't get me wrong, your first few runs with load. Um, get in there and adjust your valves again like I say it's better to adjust them so they're just ticking just so they can seat a little bit longer and uh, and get rid of the heat so on new engines I always do that and uh, you know older uh, owning one of these older engines you're gonna have to be adjusting the valves anyway so um, just get used to it after the first few runs adjust them and you'll be good probably for a year or more okay you can see this guy is cooling off about 150 so um, I'll grab an oil filter show you what you should be using and we'll keep moving on with it okay mark when you take your cover off you're gonna pull your filter out make sure you tighten this nut uh, enough there's full oil pressure in this canister so you're gonna have 40 50 pounds in here uh, don't let it leak make sure you tighten that nut good enough uh, don't strip it don't put gorilla torque on there but just make sure fire up the engine make sure that's not leaking okay what I use for all canister filters is Wix I use Wix filters on everything I, I, I just I, I don't use I know Fram's a popular brand but uh, when you do the comparison, uh, uh, Wix is the best out there. Uh, 51010, that is your filter. So it's going to come with the new filter and a gasket. The oil is going to be Shell Rotella T4 15W40. And you're probably not going to drive this enough to worry about mileage and stuff, but at a minimum, uh, change the oil once a year. Uh, that's at a minimum your transmission transfer case are, are well lubed you won't need to touch those for many years but your engine um, at least once a year uh, if you're driving it quite a bit uh, you might want to do it in the spring and fall it just, it just depends how you're driving but a minimum once a year change your oil uh, new new filter and uh, shell Rotella T4 uh, 1540 that is going to be your best oil for these guys and uh, take care of this engine and it'll last another 70 years. This was a 
one of the more difficult engines to rebuild. Uh, it did come to me in pieces and there was a lot of wasp nests and mud all throughout a lot of the parts. This was something that had to be cleaned and cleaned again and cleaned again uh, to make sure it was going to be a clean motor, crankshaft, intake exhaust, everything. Uh, there was a lot of rust and junk inside this motor but it is clean. It is now running perfectly and this will last you another lifetime mark so take care of it and uh, it'll certainly take care of you okay mark fresh oil new filter now let me just come around to this side here hope you can see this okay in the back of the engine here this this is plugging your oil galley right here okay that's where your oil pressure gauge comes from if you're going to run it your oil pressure gauge goes there and your factory pressure gauge is going to pipe out of there. This is your inside of the fuel filter. I don't like to put a filter in line here. I like to put one between the tank and the fuel pump. So after you get your, when you're running your line from the tank to the fuel pump, you can put an in line filter there. Uh, unless you like the look of them here, I think they don't look real good there. But uh, it's up to you. You can put a filter in anywhere. And um, you'll have to hook your linkage up uh, from the back of the motor to the carb. And get your uh, air horn and uh, air cleaner all figured out. Uh, other than that, uh, it is a good running engine. Oil pressure is perfect. Temperature is perfect. Uh, I can't stress enough uh, that you should put in a new radiator or one that has a new core in it. Uh, there are a lot of new radiators out there that aren't real good. Uh, if you have any questions about the radiator, um, just talk to me and I'll tell you where to get uh, the best one on the market. Um, a lot of guys are having trouble with radiators. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, some radiators just aren't cooling right and guys are overheating uh, new engines that I rebuild and uh, that just leads to a disaster so please be conscious of the radiator you're putting in uh, you spend a lot of money on an engine don't ruin it with a bad radiator uh, radiator I start all my engines up on has been record and that's all it does is start engines and uh, this engine ran at between 165 and 170 for 30 minutes uh, it was not moving. It just had a fan on it. If it was in a vehicle, air rushing through it, it would have been uh, uh, the same. But um, it was not moving and it still held good temperature. Be very careful with your radiator. Make sure it's a good one. Uh, a little bit of poor flow and you're going to smoke this thing. So um, I showed you that it runs very good with a good radiator. Make sure you do the same. Okay, Mark, I'm going to get this off the stand. I will start to get it crated. I'll figure out uh, who's going to bring it down to you and uh, get a price on that, but I'll build a nice crate for it. Your steering box is finished and it's right there. That's painted as well. I'll get everything in a crate for you and uh, I'll try and get it shipped out of here next week. I'll be in touch and uh, let you know what things are going to cost. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the startup of Mark's engine, and uh, I've got many more to go. So, uh, more coming soon, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching again. See you next time.